So, a few days ago, um, maybe like 14 days ago, so like about two weeks, I was at my girlfriend's place and when we were asleep, I started to make like some very weird noises. I started to snore very loud. I started to sneeze like very loudly. And then she actually noticed that, you know, because I never really do that, uh, that, yeah, like something was not right. And she tried to wake me up, which she couldn't. And she saw my eyes being open uh, and that I, yeah, stopped breathing. And that's when, you know, it got really serious. <laughs> And so she immediately did uh, CPR. She immediately called the ambulance uh, and they were there, I mean, very fast, like in five minutes or, or so. I got quite lucky in the way that everything went very smooth for what actually happened. Uh, so I actually had a cardiac arrest. So a heart attack is when blood uh, flow to the heart is blocked and sudden cardiac arrest occurs suddenly and often without warning. It is triggered by an electrical malfunction in the heart that causes an irregular heartbeat. With its pumping action disrupted, the heart cannot pump blood to the brain, lungs and other organs. Uh, seconds later, a person loses consciousness and has no pulse. That occurs within minutes if the victim does not receive treatment. So that's what happens um, two weeks ago. Uh, they placed me in an artificial coma uh, to just stabilize me and then the first uh, week or so when I was in the hospital they kind of observed my heart and then they actually proceeded with a surgery to implant an ICD and it's basically like a little machine that they placed in me uh, to whenever this if this would ever happen again to give me a shock and uh, yeah to kind of shock my heart in action again <laughs> I'm still like just back from the hospital like four or five days ago uh, there's still stitches in wounds uh, over here I can't really use this arm too much like I can't really do it much higher than this Although every day, you know, it's going better though. There's a couple of realizations that I actually had when I just think about what happened. You know, I escaped that just so so close. So close. If no one was next to me, like my girlfriend or with me, I would have not been here anymore. Without a question, I would not have been here anymore because I was, my heart stopped, you know. And I don't know how this is going to sound, uh, but I hope I can put it out in the right words. But if I think back, you know, I've done, I've pursued everything that kind of my heart kind of desired and wanted to, uh, to do. And, you know, traveling the world, climbing mountains, doing all these adventurous activities, starting the IPS project, you know, the work that I do, the study that I do. The people that I call friends, my girlfriend, you know, there's not a thing that I feel any regrets about. Uh, there's not a thing that I haven't done that I wanted to do. If I would have actually not have that chance and that luck, I would have died. <laughs> and this is what I mean that I hope this doesn't sound weird, but I, I would have been totally okay with it actually. I would have been able to look from wherever I would have gone to back to this life that I had here and be like, yeah, I, up until now where I am today here, lived exactly according to, to how I wanted to live life. And I just kind of wanted to bring that message out that this wisdom that you hear so many times to not live life with regrets, <laughs> I can once again say that this is 100% true. Do you know? Do not waste your time. Yes. Make it count.
So another random thought here, I guess that's gonna be the theme of this vlog here to just share some random topics or some random things that came up uh, through this last couple of days that I was in the hospital. There's this one quote and I also made an Instagram post about it uh, and it's a quote, I don't know about who, but, uh, but one that I heard from Rich Hungerford, SAS patrol commander, someone that I did a survival course, uh, or well, it was called the warrior program, talked, I guess, about this already uh, in some other YouTube videos here on my channel, uh, but also interviewed him on the IPS podcast, which I will link in the description. He had a quote uh, that goes like follow, this too shall pass. And that quote has helped me through so many things. And it's actually a, a quote that once again, when I was in the hospital, um, after, you know, being there, it's, n it's not a pleasant thing, uh, especially now with, with COVID actually, because you can't have any visitors, so it, it gets kind of lonely. But that quote helped me also to know just, yeah, very simply that this too shall pass, this this moment that I am in, you know, in a hospital. <coughs> and, you know, now I am here already, like, uh, outside of the hospital uh, for a few days now. So it is to pass. And it's a quote that I can recommend more people to sort of uh, remember and uh, maybe to write down so you can, you know, more easily remember it. Uh, I guess it's a really powerful one that kind of brings comfort in the moments when you go through pain and brings a, a sense of appreciation in the moments when something beautiful happens to remind yourself that both of those moments are temporarily and will pass. Whenever you're healing from something, you know, like mentally or physically from kind of a wound, it's unbelievable how good it feels to be in nature. Now that I'm here and can breathe some fresh air, it's awesome actually and have the sun on me again. Uh, I mean, even if the sun wouldn't be out, it always feels so good when, when you feel a bit less to go outside and to surround yourself with some forest, with some green uh, that I really strongly feel again, you know, helps. Yeah, whatever you might be feeling, something physical or, or mental, get outside, go for walks, seek nature, seek some wild nature. It's so healing. It's so healing. Alright, let's see if we can find a nice place here somewhere to, uh, to pee. <laughs> <laughs>